bout. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with an amateur record of one win and one loss. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 72.5 kilograms. Representing TriStar Gym and fighting out of Beirut, Lebanon. Give it up for Tony Barashev. And his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with an amateur record of five wins and one loss. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 72.8 kilograms. Representing KHK MMA and fighting out of the magnificent kingdom of Bahrain. Give it up for Mohammed Samir. The Vanilla Gorilla himself taking charge. Now here we go. Calf kick from Samir. Oh, what a frenetic Still piece. clean shots are landing. Tony Borashi twisting absolutely no time, getting busy with the hands. Nice knee from Samir. 50-50 clinch being initiated here. Both men trying to establish a little bit of dominance. Borashi just changing things up a little bit with that head position now, going underneath the chin of his opponent. Very intelligent because where the head goes, the body follows. Phil and weightlifting, they establish strength by who can lift the highest weight in mixed martial arts very often. The fighter with the greater strength establishes it right here. Who can keep who pinned up against that fence? Because once the hips are on the fence, fighters are denied the leverage they need to punch effectively. Nice digging in for the underhook there and reversal of the position from Samir. Can he get the hands connected? Perhaps working there for a potential inside trip. But again, these guys are flipping and reversing. In on a single is Borashid. Borashid in, Samir countering properly. Can he cut the angle and run the pipe a little bit on that? Denied by Samir. Oh, beautiful work. Just used a little bump off the cage, off the fence itself to create a little bit of space and secure the takedown. Borashid moving now into a high top half guard. And again, you see a lot of fighters, this is a, a position that's become popularized recently in MMA. Guys don't necessarily try and work and scramble for the mount. They're happy to sit in almost this anchor position of the half guard and land strikes from there. Absolutely true, Phil. In grappling, half guard, bottom half guard is the, the most productive position you can be in. In MMA, it's something like half mount, and it may even be worse because you're denied the use of your hips to properly bridge your opponent away. Have to give credit to Mohamed Samir there for working back to his feet, shrimping out and getting up. But again, Borashi just looks to be very, very solid and hard to move here. Little knees being landed to keep Borashi guessing. And again, Tony Borashi just exchanges the position. Now landing little pop knees of his own. We, we may have seen a, a knee go a little bit low there, Phil. Looks like no harm, no foul. And again, much like we saw in the first fight, these clinch exchanges where both men have an over-under position, it's incredibly taxing on the arms. It is, Phil. Mixed martial arts, of course, requires two completely separate physiological skill sets. One, explosiveness, and two, endurance at moments when there's very little movement of the muscles at all. They're completely different, and that's why it takes a rare athlete to compete at this level in this sport. 10 second clapper just gone. Can anybody do something definitive and steal the round a little bit? Oh, that looked low. There was a knee there perhaps, looked a little bit low, but again, no fighter making anything of it. Incredibly close first round there. I, I think perhaps the the takedown that was scored may be the, 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 the component of the fight that may sway the judges just a little bit because as we know, takedowns do score high and heavy in MMA. Phil, I can see the judges going either way for it. I can make an excellent argument for either fighter. I personally am probably going to give it to Borashid. What's your call? I think that's fair. As I say, I do think the, the takedown was the most telling component of the first round there. And he did start very heavy with the hands. He did put the pressure on his opponent. But again, incredibly, incredibly close round to judge. 
Green Hill replay may be coming up. I think we talked a little bit too much, so they skipped the replay and favor us trying to play judge. We are seconds away from the Brave Combat Federation cage doors locking and round two beginning. Both men look fresh, both men look ready to go. The vanilla gorilla just cleaning up a little bit of excess water there. Round two. And again, Burishi takes the center straight away. Trying to put the pressure on. Big swing from Samir there. Samir clearly trying to bait his opponent and land a big counter shot. Oh, huge hook. Actually hook. lands the gum shield out of the mouth of the fighter. Oh, no, it was the fighter who threw the punch who lost his gum shield. It happens when you land, try and land the biggest shot you can. You grunt. That grunt can drive them out, though. Come Mouth shield from the mouth. Oh, nice calf kick Mohammed by Sam Samir. Mohamed Samir looks like he's trying to land that one big right hand over the top. I'd like to see him, if that's the, the, the particular punch he's trying to land, I'd like to see him change levels a little bit more, maybe even fake the takedown and come over the top with it. What he doesn't want to do, Phil, is stay in the end of Borashid's hands. That's a nice kick from Borashid. Nice calf kick again. Tony Borashid needs to be careful of chasing his opponent too much. Because as you get a little bit more fatigued, you're, you stop protecting your chin just as much. Take down attempt here from Mohamed Samir, charging Tony Borashid against the cage. Can he use it to get the takedown in very much the same fashion as Tony did in the first round? But again, reversal of position from Tony. And Phil, from I think what happened was Tony Borashid's corner told him that was an extremely close round. We need more this round, and we are seeing a more aggressive Borashid in the last minute and a half. Midway point of the second round, as you alluded to there, Kirik. At the minute, Borashi defending the takedown attempt, but again, a change, reversal of position. And again, the most taxing aspect of mixed martial arts is that 50-50 clinch position. To the uninitiated, it may not necessarily look like a lot is happening, but this is so draining, so taxing on both men. And of course, knees to the body pop in there and occasionally, which makes it all the more challenging. We do have the beginnings of a guillotine attempt. He's momentarily had the hands connected, trying to go potentially for a high elbow. I think he's abandoned the guillotine. May just try and reverse the position. Or she may be trying to take the back. Oh, that's a good knee to the sternum. Borashid needs to be wary here of a potential trip, a judo trip coming from his opponent, but Borashid again with smart head position. And as we see often in amateur mixed martial arts, they, they can get that little bit lower with the head because they don't need to worry about the knee to the head coming from their opponent. Absolutely, Phil. I think Borashid may be making a mistake and Samir doing the right thing and throwing these little shots in here. Attempting to pin your opponent on the wall by itself is not going to impress the judges. If your back is against the wall and you're still landing a few shots, you may be ahead in the judges' eyes. We've got short time. Figure four grip here. Maybe trying to is work in place. for that. Kimura, does he have enough time to get that? I don't think he's just going to be beaten by the clock, but again, showing just how dangerous he is. But now comes the question, Kirik. That was perhaps the, the, the most frenetic exchange that both men had. Do you give the points to the takedown scored by Borashid, or do you give the points to the, ta or the submission attempt from Samir? Phil, I always say that the most likely way to tell who won the round is how it ended, and the way it ended was Mohamed Samir in on a key lock from bottom. These were both extremely hard rounds to call, but I am calling this 19 to 19 right now. I think whoever wins the next round wins the fight. So potentially all to play for going in to the third and final round of what's been a really intricate, interesting bout. Vanilla Gorilla runs a tight ship, barking everybody out of the Brave Combat Federation cage. Doors are locked. Fighters are loaded, and I do believe whoever wins this round wins this fight. 
back when Aaron Wallace was a competitive fighter himself. He used to compete at middleweight. It's been a while since that man's seen 84 kilos. He's still a middleweight, all his weight's in his middle. <laughs> Third and final round. Slip there from Samir. Again, Borashi taking the center as he has. Woo! It's a beautiful straight right down the so pipe. Oh, it flies. I think now Borashi might have a little bit more of a an inkling of the range here. And he does seem to be a little bit longer than his opponent and potentially that one too. If he could land that again. Phil, Samir is very intelligently trying to counter the range with the hands with calf kicks. You can kick the calf effectively without being in range to get struck or counter struck. Again in the clinch. Tony Borashi trying to bring his opponent up a level so he can't get those hands connected and force the takedown. Has one underhook, has one overhook, and intelligent work from Samir constantly landing little strikes. May try for the high crotch takedown here. Absolutely, Phil. I, if I have to guess, this fight is going to go to a decision. I think it could go to Samir because he was more aggressive with his strikes throughout. You can hear middleweight champion of the world, Mohamed Fakhreddin, telling Tony Borashi to let the hands go a little bit more. Because when he did, when he got into almost a, a slightly more relaxed state, he did land that beautiful straight right down the pipe. Slightly telegraphed takedown there from Mohamed Samir. But he's doing a good job of just wearing on Tony Borashi right now. But if either fighter were to do something definitive like a takedown or a, a, big, a big strike, they potentially could steal this round and the fight itself. It could, but I think we're going to see Samir continue to try and land those little knees. There you saw it right there. I do believe that's what's going to probably win him this round. He was just a little bit more aggressive with the striking. Again, trying to get in on that single. Has the hands connected. Needs to get underneath his opponent just a little bit more. Arm Wallace called for the break. A little bit of inactivity. And if anything, this is going to be a good thing for Tony Borashid. Needs to be careful of dropping the hands a little bit when he's throwing those kicks. Could get countered with something over the top. And again, another takedown attempt from Mohamed Samir. Landing right back into that clinch position. Reversed by Tony Borashid. And now it's Tony in on the takedown. He has the hands connected. Again, that figure four grip from Mohamed Samir. Big takedown, but that Kimura grip is right there. Can he do something with it? If he does, Phil, we've, he's got 10 seconds to do it. He lets it go, abandons it. Back to his feet. Fight could be won in the next couple of seconds. Not so much, Over. Not so much pulling guard as falling into it, and that is one of the closest fights I have seen in a very long time. I think it's going to take the judges a little bit of time to render the decisions because that's a knife edge kind of fight, Kirik. It is. We've got a fantastic regulatory team here. We've got fantastic judges. They are dotting their eyes. They're crossing them twice. If I had to guess, by the slightest of margins, I would give that fight to Mohamed Samir. But I could easily make an excellent argument for it to go the other way, and I wouldn't blink if it does. Some beautiful calf kicks landed there by Mohamed Samir. And then you see that picture perfect straight right down the middle from Tony Borashid. So again, both fighters could stake a legitimate claim to winning this fight. It really comes down to how the judges seen it. It does, and striking is extremely hard to judge. Do you give it to the person that landed more shots that weren't as effective or fewer shots that were extremely effective? And I think if you look at the punch stats for this bout, that is what we saw. Tony Borashid landed the most devastating shots of the fight, but Mohamed Samir landed more of them by a significant margin. It, at that point, becomes a judge's decision. Literally, it's a judgment call. And that's why they say, never leave it in the hands of the judges. Still, both fighters have got to be happy with their performance. They're exhausted, spent right now. Didn't hold anything back. Tony Burashid raising the hands aloft. He thinks he's done enough to get the win. 
Phil, if I was him, I would think I won. When you see a fighter raise their hand, even if you don't think they won, it's not that they're being cocky. It's not that they're playing to the judges. It's they know what they did. He knows he landed some beautiful clean shots, and he believes, not unreasonably, that that's enough to give him the decision. Little fist bump there, a moment to share between the two fighters. Nothing but love in the Brave Combat Federation cage. The champ has now walked across the Brave Combat Federation cage, shook hands with his own student's opponent. Everybody is smiles and hugs. And just as I thought, it is taking the judges a little bit of time to render their decision, just showing what a close fight that was. And just as I say that, the Roaring Lion is ascending the steps into the Brave Arena. Carrick, we have a decision. All right, Brave Nation, another classic battle inside the Brave 44 cage. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 29, 28, Samir. Your next judge scores about 29, 28, Borashed. And your third judge scores about 29, 28 for your winner by split decision from KHK MMA in the red corner, Mohammed Sal.